everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. I finished the apron blank that was included in the recent Handmade Holidays Bella Box. I will include a link below this video where you can get your own Bella Box. I chose to hoop my apron differently than they show in the instructions. And as you can see, it worked out just fine. And I also wanted to give you another tip. If you are, I've got this package open, but if you are looking for apron blanks, these come from Sam's. This is from Sam's Club. It's their Daily Chef brand. They sell them in packages of three. Out of, there is white and there is black. And they're like $11 last time I checked. Of course, that was about a year ago. They might've gone up a little bit. But still, that's very inexpensive for three aprons. And they have two pockets on them as well. This one doesn't have any pockets, but see, these have pockets. So if you were going to do these, you would do the centering and by folding in half and fold the bib down six inches, just like you do on this one, just like the instructions say to do. And then you can just do any kind of, uh, any kind of design that you want on there. I like to use uh, the black ones for the barbecue grill, you know, for Keith. He enjoys those. He's got a couple. So anyway, I just wanted to give you that little tip. And the video is going to start right here for the Handmade Holidays apron. Hey, everybody. Okay. I, uh, first of all, I'm going to apologize. My husband's outside running around on the mower. So if you hear a lawnmower, that's my lawn guy, also known as my husband. I'm going to make the apron in the Handmade Holidays Bella Box. And I do things just a little bit differently than Kimber Bell does when it comes to hooping. So I'm just going to take you along with my process. You can certainly do what they say to in the book. And one of the things they want you to do is to stitch a crosshair directly on your stabilizer. I don't do that. I have a hoop mat from Dime and I usually use this whenever I am hooping something where I need to find center. This is a silicone mat. It is absolutely wonderful. I've had it for several years and if I'm making something that is an in the hoop project like a toad or a table runner or something, I don't need to use this. But when I need to find center for my project, and there's not something that I can cut like I did where I uh, folded the background fabric in half and made little notches on the wall hangings for Candy Corn Quilt Shop or Red, White, and Bloom, then I'll go ahead and use my hoop mat. So they want you to use a wash away sticky back stabilizer. And I do not happen to have Kimber Bell's wash away sticky back stabilizer. That is one of the reasons I do like to have, and I will link to all of this stuff below if you've got questions about this. One of the things I like to buy, this is from Sulky, and this is a uh, stabilizer sampler. It's got several different kind of stabilizers in it, but one of the ones it has is a wash away. If you don't have a wash away stabilizer for the apron project, let's say you have a sticky back stabilizer but it's a tear away, not a wash away. I do not recommend using that. So like this is a self-adhesive tear away stabilizer. Okay, sticky plus. When you go to peel it off, it's gonna stay on the back. You'll have little bits of it that stay on the back of your project. This is great if you're gonna be doing something like the inside of your project will be covered with a lining and you won't see it. So this is great for something like that. That is not what's happening here. There's a saying in the embroidery world. I read it in a comment from one of my very smart viewers and it said, if you wear it, don't tear it. That means don't use tear away stabilizer on something that is a garment or something you're gonna wear. So this is the top of the apron and I consider it like a garment. So I would not use a sticky back tear away. If you don't have any wash away stabilizer at all, you can use cutaway stabilizer. And cutaway is different from tearaway. This is just off a great big roll I have. I thought I had another piece of it here. What did I do with it? 
So this is tearaway stabilizer. It tears like paper, very easy to tear. And then you have cutaway stabilizer, which is like this, and you can certainly use this. This is non-adhesive. You can use it, but just realize all around the outside of your design on the back, there's gonna be however much you leave cut around the outside. You don't cut it away out of the middle. This cannot, it, it doesn't tear. I mean, it doesn't tear hardly at all. I, I can't tear it. This is usually what you will find on the inside of garments, is a, a cutaway stabilizer. You can also use that fibrous water soluble, although that's better for lace. That's one of the reasons I like to get the sampler packs because they have rarely used stabilizers in them it's a lot of the time. So that's where I found them. Tear easy and white, fuse and stitch. Here's Fabra Solvi Sticky Back. This is what I'm looking for right here. So if it says Solvi, that means it dissolves in water. That's what I'm looking for. So that's why these sampler packs are great. I won't use this very often, and it's just nice to have it so I know what it is that I'm getting. Okay. So if I look at sticky Fabrisolvi, it says it works the same as Fabrisolvi, only it has a self-stick back, which is accessed by removing a release sheet. It's like magic for turned applique, stitch it, turn it, stick it. No paper component. It washes away easily and completely every time. This is exactly what you are looking for. So I would urge you to consider getting these sampler packs because sometimes they can save the day, which is very handy. Because I would not use a roll of wash away sticky back stabilizer. I just don't do that many projects with it. All right, so I have now, this is in two parts. Part one is getting your apron all squared up in the hoops, centered so your de design stitch is right, and then part two is stitching the design out. Because there's no applique in this at all, and it's just straight uh, stitching, I am going to do it on the multi-needle. Those of you with a single needle, you will just do all the thread changes right in the order that it gives you right here. So when you do this, you want the salvi side down, and you want the paper side up. I'm gonna hoop it. We're doing this because we're gonna float the apron. And what float means is we're not actually hooping the apron. We're hooping the stabilizer, then we're gonna float the project on top of this. This is almost too small. This is my five by seven hoop, so this will work. Normally, you guys, I will do one of these first and, and work all the kinks out, but I don't have two. I only have one. So I'm going to tighten this up. This is a brother screwdriver. Tighten this up real good. All right. And then you need to take a pin and go all around the outside and score it and leave the opening in there. And then pull it up. Okay, that's what we're looking for there. I have one of those scoring tools. I don't even know what I did with it. Now, what you want to do, and this alleviates you having to stitch out that crosshair, is I'm going to line up. I'm going to do it this way. I believe it's a tall design. So I'm going to line up the center notches on my hoop, north, south, east, and west, with that heavy dark line right there. And that's what I'm looking for. Now on your apron, you'll need to iron it and get all the wrinkles out of it. You want to fold it. Let me move this out of the way and show you. Okay. You're going to want to fold this right sides together. This is exactly the way they show you to do it in the book. Line up your top edges so that they're straight and fold it right sides together. And then you're going to want to come down six inches from the top of here. So I've got 
six squares, six one inch squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, oh, oh, seven. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have this even. I'm going to put these out of the way here. You have this folded in half so that you've measured so that your outer edges match, your top edges match, and then at the six inch mark, you want to fold it down, straight down so that this lines up straight. Okay. Now this is going to be upside down to you guys, but this is how I'm going to do it. So, now you just, you can see the crosshair. There's no need to stitch it. You can see it. I love this dime hoop mat. It is fabulous. Okay, so what you've done is you've secured one quadrant, you fold it open, get it straight, and it's sticking to the sticky stabilizer. And then fold it over, get it straight, and I'm going to make sure that my fold line lines up with the black line through the mat. These mats are worth their weight in gold. Another thing that's nice about these mats your hoop will not slide around and that's very nice because it will slide around on these plastic cutting mats but this is straight now and it looks really good everything is centered and fine and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pins because I'm old school and I'm just gonna way up at the top I'm gonna pin it in place and this is just gonna make sure that it's not going to slide anywhere. We don't want that coming loose at all. You want to make sure wherever you pin that it that your design will not hit it. Now if you have an embroidery program that will allow you to print out the design ahead of time that's great and then you can set it on there and see exactly uh, how it is not going to touch your pins at all. I, I just do not rely on just, I'm sure you can, but I don't, on just the sticky stabilizer. Just old school like that. Okay, so now that that's done, we need wonder clips. You don't want anything getting caught up in the way, so I'm going to roll up my, uh, my little strap Make sure that it's out of the way. Let's see here. Use a big wonder clip on this. All right, that looks good. And these other two straps from here that go around your waist, you might want to put them together and tie them up so that they are together and they are on top of the hoop. They're not going to get caught up under there. They are tied up on top. So essentially now we're ready to go to the machine. Okay, I have got all of the colors that are listed in the apron directions on the back of the machine. And if you have a single needle, you'll just You'll stitch the green and then the brown and the black and the yellow just one at a time. I'm going to set up my machine to go ahead and stitch it all at once because that is the beauty of the multi-needle. Here's the 5 by 7 hoop and I have it set in here with the top up here. I can tell because that's where the little hook is and I have the bottom of the apron kind of up with a little clip to prevent the weight from being pulled around and I'm making sure that nothing's going to fall into the embroidery field. The little loop that goes around your neck, the band is right here, that, that one, hanging down low. So that's fine. I have a Filtech magnetic bobbin in the bobbin case and I put in the little drop of oil like you're supposed to before you start everything. One of the things you'll notice about Kimberbell is that they don't give you any thread color numbers. There are just too many brands of thread on the market out there, so they give you a picture so you can see what color they suggest. And again, that's a suggestion. You don't have to do it like that, but 
that's what I'm going to do because I don't have an imagination. So I have all of those colors on the back of the machine up there and I need to pull up the design that I sent over wirelessly so I'm going to hit the wireless button and there it is right there. Touch it and I'm going to hit set and you can tell right now it is actually vertical. We need to turn it horizontal. I'm going to hit set and I am going to rotate it and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees so that the top of the design is at the the top of the neck of the apron. I'm going to tell it okay. Now I don't need to do any more editing with this. Now I need to tell the machine what threads to use because the machine doesn't know. I didn't program in any colors and even when you do half the time you're you know you're throwing the dice there so you want to touch the three spools right here and it'll give you a preview of what it is that it's about to stitch and so this first one is that green and that is color number nine these colors are already anchored in and that's from candy corn quilt shop I could clear those out in settings it doesn't matter because the green spool that I want to use for this Christmas tree design is on spool number nine. So it thinks nine is orange, but it's not. So it doesn't matter. I'm just going to touch nine. And all the colors up here are going to change and be totally wrong. It doesn't matter. It's still going to stitch the green thread on number nine. And then I have the cookie fill, and that is on thread number four. I'll touch number two. So you can see we're on two out of 13. Number two is going to be number four. This is going to look all wrong up here. Don't worry about it. And then the third stitch is black, and that is number five. That is correct. That's actually set right. Five and six are set right. Everything else is anchored in wrong. Number four is the yellow, and I have yellow in thread spool number one. Number five, if you get lost, because these, these, these are now the numbers of the thread spools you're going to use. So if you get lost, you can always look right here. It's going to be the green again, and the green is number nine. And that didn't come up with any kind of color at all. Don't worry about that. That is my rolling pin. I'm going to make that a little bit darker. That is on spool number three. It's going to be a dark brown. And we're on stitch number seven is red. And that is number seven. And stitch number eight is the dark gray. So that is number ten. Number nine is red, and that's spool number seven. Number 10 is pink, that is spool number two. Number 11 is the dark gray again, that is spool number 10. Number 12 is the pink, spool number two. And the last one is the red again, and that is spool number seven. I'm going to touch OK. That's it. So even though the picture is wrong up here with the colors because the colors were anchored, I still assigned the color based on the spools that are on the top of the machine. I'm all done. I'm going to hit embroidery. And it is ready to go. So I'm just going to touch lock and start. And it's a 35-minute stitch out. It's all done. It looks amazing. Tell it okay so it stops flashing. I moved my pins into the corners just to be safe. This turned out awesome. Look at that. Didn't that come out good? Just beautiful. Very nice. Okay, so I'm going to pop it out of the hoop. This is not really a tear away, so what you want to do is trim away real close to the stitching like a quarter of an inch away and then rinse the rest off. I'm gonna clean up my little tails back here without trimming the knots. 
So normally on these scissors, you want to slide them if possible versus, you know, kind of slide them around the outside. Hang the garment down so that the garment or the apron, as the case may be, is away from you. And that way you're not going to cut into your fabric. So you want to get like this far away from it. Then you just rinse this, follow the manufacturer's instructions to rinse it for whatever brand you happen to have of sticky. Or if you didn't have sticky and you used cutaway, then you'll just trim it to a quarter of an inch all the way around and you'll be done. And it'll be fine. It, it'll work just fine with that too. And then on these, I'm just going to, the tails that are standing up, I'm just going to trim them a little bit shorter. If you wanted to, Silky makes tender touch once this is dry. And it's, you know, if you wanted to cover this, you could absolutely use like a Pellon featherweight iron-on interfacing. And that works great. Uh, it, it almost feels like a Trico. It's really, really lightweight. I use it all the time in the place of Tender Touch. That's kind of Pellon's equivalent. Okay, so I'm all finished. I'm going to rinse this, and then I'll let you see it when it's dry. There's the back, okay, and there's the front, and that turned out just adorable. All right, you guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.